Okay, so we're not talking about LinkedIn. We're talking about beyond LinkedIn. So I hope I'm not disappointing anybody. Um, I'm not really going to talk about LinkedIn. But what I'm going to talk about is how you can help recruiters find you online. Many people who are 40 plus have some interesting concepts about being found online outside of LinkedIn. So we want to explore those for you and hopefully I'm going to convince you to think about this whole process a little bit differently. So let's start with a quiz. Say for example, when you think about your online reputation, your presence online, there are a group of people who are way over here and they say, I don't want my picture online. I'm talking about outside of LinkedIn. I don't want my picture online. I don't want people to know where I live. And I don't want people to know how old I am. I will admit, I don't want people to know how old I am. <laughs> <laughs> then you got the folks over here. And these folks over here, they have their whole life online. They have their birthday, birth year, first child, grandchildren, first car, last car. They have their whole life. Everything they do is online. So where are you on this continuum? How many of you guys are far over this way? You want to be anonymous. The hole. The hole. You're past the wall. You're past Isn't the wall. Isn't this just an age timeline? <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. So we had about, let's see your hands again. Okay, half the group, maybe a little less than half, really don't want to be found online that much, right? And so are the rest of you further over on this side? Yeah. There's some people who are, I guess, more in the middle. Where are you? Um, I'm pretty far to the left. You are? Um, from my side. Where it's You're pretty far <laughs> over here. All right, over there, except for LinkedIn. Okay. Yeah. So. Do you mean that you don't want people to see you except for LinkedIn? Yes. Okay. So my personal life, I keep very private. Yeah. When it comes to more professional, then I'm there. Okay. You didn't... Most of my social presence is on LinkedIn, and there's some other, but it's not very active space. Okay. And you were right. This is very much an age timeline. Uh, typically, mature people tend to be over on this side. And um, younger people tend to be over on this side. And so I'm going to see if by the end of this presentation, anybody has moved a little bit either way along the continuum. That's my goal. So why is this presentation important? You know, a lot of people have misconceptions about what it means to have an online presence. I'm sorry, I'm probably driving you nutty no, you're by fine. moving, but I like to move. Um, a lot of people have misconceptions about what it means to have an online presence. They feel like, you know, you either have to be like a rock star for it to really matter. They feel like, oh, if you don't have thousands and tens of thousands of followers, then you're, you're, you're nobody, you know, they, they feel like, oh, nobody ever likes my post, so I'm not going to do it. They get into all of those kinds of things, which I call the foolishness of having a reputation online. It's important if you know how to use it, but it really is a little bit foolish. So why is this presentation important? Because you guys are interested in finding either new positions or potentially new careers. How many people, I, I heard a couple of people say they're going to stay in their same career field. How many? Okay, how many are going to move to a new career field? How many are you thinking about starting a business? Okay. Let me tell you why this is important. Social media background checks are becoming increasingly important. We all know of the people who have committed atrocities and had it all listed all throughout social media, but nobody was paying attention to it. And even the people who saw it never reported it to the right authorities. 
So now, especially for those of you who are thinking about going into any government setting, your social media will be examined very much so, even going further back. In fact, I have friends who are investigators for people who need clearances, and they're going through a whole new training program on this whole social media environment because they want to know who you are. Now, we do know that in certain states there are some laws to protect people because we don't want to use these social media background checks so that they can see the color of your skin or your gender or your ethnicity or hear you speak with an accent and say, oh, we want to discriminate against that person. So there, there are laws in place and of course they're gonna be bent and squeezed and all of that. But this is becoming very critical, very critical. Yes? Do employers hold it against you if they can find nothing about you? We're going to get to that. Good question. Yes. Uh, would they hold, could they hold it against you if you express your political beliefs if you're for a particular party, for example, or if you're against the president's point of view on things? <laughs> okay. Put it this way. Put it this way. Whoever is doing the screening, and in a lot of cases, the larger companies, it's you know, it's a piece of software. If it's a piece of software, that software could be programmed to look for a certain type of person. Just like when you go to companies and you do the personality tests. That software can be looking for more conservative, more liberal, whatever the things that the company feels will make you a good fit. If one of the areas, if you seem to be very, you know, when you get to some of the political stuff, people's views nowadays are really, they're out there. They're, <laughs> they're harsh, they're name calling and all kinds. Now if you go to that extent, for some companies that's gonna raise a red flag. Um, for other companies, I'm gonna be like, yeah, she's one of us. <laughs> right, right. So it really does depend so that's one of the things we're going to talk about is what you want to make sure that presence really looks like for you. You need to make some decisions about that. So this is just becoming increasingly important. Metrics. We are in a metrics driven environment. Data analysts, you are in the right field. <laughs> that field is exploding. Every company, even the smaller companies, are starting to look at metrics. Everybody wants to know numbers. So if you are candidate A and you're up against candidate B, candidate B is in different places, strategic places. You can find this person online. They are thoughtful with their posts. They look, you know, pretty much squeaky clean versus you who has nothing, more than likely candidate B is going to get the job. Yeah, because they want to try to know in advance who they're hiring. And people who are um, under the radar, for some reason it raises red flags in a lot of places because they think you're like, you know, potentially a terrorist, potentially a, you know what I mean? They really do, they really do. Like my brother is one of these people who he thinks he's under, he can't even be under the radar, but he tries very hard to be under there. And so when it's time for him to use credit, even though his credit score is decent when he's doing business stuff, he always has to do something a little extra because they're like, how is this possible, you know, to operate in a digital world and you not be digital? Mm -hmm. But metrics, yes. Go ahead. Um, <clears throat> so on that last point, uh, so let's say that you have a presence on the putting things inside. Mm -hmm. 
other than LinkedIn. You have a presence on, say, one platform, mm -hmm. but not two, three, four. Like, is that going to satisfy that sort of minimum presence when, when people are looking? You know what I mean? Like, are they looking for you to kind of be across the waterfront? Right. In, you have to be on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. And you like, cannot be everywhere. Right. I mean, unless you're a Unless that's what that's you're what doing you for right. a living, right? <laughs> right? So what you want to do is where are the potential employers you are looking to talk with? Besides LinkedIn, most employers have a Twitter account. Twitter, you know, the tweets come so fast and they only last, I think now it's up to less than an hour. But most employers do have a Twitter account. Most employers probably have a Facebook presence, but for employers, that's not really like the main thing. So if you only have time for one other thing, um, besides an Instagram, depending on the type of employer, if their product is something that you show, they'll be on Instagram, but a lot of, a lot of companies are not. Twitter is definitely a good choice. Um, but if you know that you're going after a particular employer and they are always on Facebook, they're doing Facebook Lives, then you probably want to be there. So if you're targeting specific employers, go where they are. But just remember, metrics is really important right now. And then your thought leadership. Thought leadership simply means that you know your stuff. And we show that we know our stuff with our resume. We show we know our stuff through our LinkedIn accounts if we're using it to the max. But we want to also show that we know our stuff by the people we associate with, the events that we attend, the thoughtful comments that we make. That all establishes your thought leadership. And I'm going to be giving you some examples from my own life, not because I'm anybody but because I want you to see how it works. So 10 years ago, I had a consulting company and my 12 year old son was diagnosed with cancer. So I didn't work for about two years. His treatment was three and a half years. So for about two years, I didn't work at all because that was the really harsh part of the treatment. And then when he started to get a little bit better, I couldn't do the consulting because it meant I traveled the country. So I started doing you know, little things here and there, um, but I never got back to that full consulting compa uh, capacity. So I started looking at online stuff and trying to figure out what can I do, what can I do? And I can't even begin to tell you how many things I investigated, how many things I tried. None of them worked, right? Because I was trying to be somebody that I'm not. I even tried to sell uh, shoes on Etsy because, on uh, eBay, because one of my friends was making like a couple thousand dollars a month. I was like, Psh. she told me where to go get the discounted shoes. And, you know, describe them and make people feel good wearing them. And I did everything that she told me to do. I didn't sell anything. I'm not a fashionista. Mm. She is. I was trying to be somebody that I was not. Mm. Fast forward, um, he's fine, start back working, um, get the consulting firm back up. First year we did okay, didn't have to borrow. Second year, double sales. Third year, he had a relapse. And I didn't work again for a year and a half. And so that was three years ago. Three years ago. And he's doing well. He graduates next month with a master's in biomedical engineering. I'm a proud mom to say that. <laughs> One year ago, I decided to target LinkedIn. I never, I had a profile, I never did anything with it. I probably had 20 friends or connections. <coughs> About a year ago, I decided I'm gonna start really trying to use Facebook because I know a lot of people 40 plus are using Facebook. Not so much for business necessarily, but I know the people that I wanna reach are there. And I'm gonna show you 
how this works. So you can also use the information from this presentation if you want to earn income while you are looking for your next position. Okay, so this is what we're going to cover. I can't cover everything, we don't have enough time, but we're going to talk about your online reputation. Um, and then here's just four ways that you can build that. You can build it through websites and blogging, um, influencer relationships, speaking, and either hosting or participating in virtual summits. That's a very fast way to impact your reputation. So, I want you to do this. Take out your phones. I want you to Google yourself. A, a clerical question here. Mm -hmm. Is your slide presentation available to us? Yeah, I, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Has anybody Googled themselves? Okay. I'm a doctor in Indiana, <laughs> So there are usually 10 listings on that first page of Google. Is anybody finding themselves on the first page? What are you finding yourself related to? I have, um, the first one is my Google account. <laughs> Second is LinkedIn. The third is Quiv. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Is that a writer's? No, Quiv is um, a website where you can uh, provide services and what you are doing is you are, um, the people that are taking your services, paying for your choice of charity. Oh, okay, okay. I'm gonna see if I can get online while we're talking. Go ahead. So you are, you're pretty well known online. <laughs> do you do anything to attract attention? Um, only on LinkedIn, as I said. Okay. <laughs> Anybody else found themselves? Yeah. How do you spell yeah, Quiv? I can't get on that. Sorry? Quiv? Quiv. The uh, password, if you want to use Wi Fi, is 1325 capital G and the word street with a small s. It's Q U I V. Q, okay, thank yeah. you. <laughs> And anybody else find themselves? Yeah. Um, Who else found themselves? Okay, what, where, where are you in the two, top ten? Number, number two. two? Uh, the link, it's the link ten. Mm -hmm. And that's about it. 1325. Everything, everything so else has to do with the hockey player mostly. And some other <laughs> <people>. <laughs> right. I found my obituary. Yeah, I have a very unique <laughs> name, so it's not oh. uh, <laughs> It's easier. G so, Street. Yeah. G Street, so yeah. Okay, you're number two. Anybody else? Yes. Well, my name is John Stewart. <laughs> so, <laughs> there's about a zillion John Stewarts. However, when I Googled myself, my business website came up next to my name right at like hit number two. I didn't yeah, know that. Nice. Yeah. So that was kind of cool. Yeah. I can't find myself personally because there's too many other famous John Stewarts, but okay. my business did come up. Okay. Anybody else? Yes. Yeah. I my LinkedIn came up number one, which makes me happy. <laughs> okay. Anything else on first page? Um, <coughs> yeah, presentation, I think. Where'd you get the presentation? Right uh, here. here. Okay, 40 plus. Okay, 40 plus. Uh, okay. All right, so when I Google Angela Heath, let's see what happens. Seems like this is going really very slow. Okay, can you guys see that yet? You can't see it. I don't know how to switch it over because I can see it on my.
So I'm not going to be able to go back and forth. I thought yeah, I would be able to go back and forth. So how do you guys feel about your reputation so far? You feel good. You got on you got on the first page. Do you when you look at your name, if you still have it up, look at how many pages there are that could have come up. Usually hundreds of thousands. So if you make it to the front page at all, that's like a really good thing. And two things you learned already, the power of LinkedIn. Most of you who came up, it was your LinkedIn profile. And then the power of a presentation for organization is also powerful. So, oh, this is really not going to be good for this presentation. I'll have to just talk you through it, which I can do. I'll talk you through it. Okay, I'll keep, I'll keep trying here. I, I need to see this. Oh, you want to see what's going yeah. on? Yeah. If that's okay. Let's okay. show Oh, it's showing my um you have to spell out the street. Oh, you have to spell it out. Oh, yeah. It's showing my um this is my uh Oh, I know. Right. Okay. Really you can see it on the screen. Yeah, but we can't see it. But yeah, we, we have an extended screen. There it is. You know what? Can you stay here for just a minute and then I will okay. go back and I won't, I, I'm not going to be able to show you guys. It took too much time. Anyway, you Google me. I can't even see it anymore because it's not here. But out of 10, nine are about me. Wow. From my company, three of these, oh, I got knocked off. So uh -oh. Uh -oh. I had three images off. We're going to get rid of her. No. Oh. <laughs> I had three images out of the five. Um, also came up a podcast I did, uh, a presentation I'm doing for a university, uh, my LinkedIn profile. Facebook, I have a group called Baby Boomers Make Money that came up. Um, I can't tell you what else came up because it's, what I'm seeing on here is totally different from what's here. So all of this has happened in just a few months. In just a few months, I was able to get on the front page of Google and maintain it. And I'm going to show you how that happened. Let's just go back. That, so you're going to explain to us how we can get on the front page? Yeah. Excellent. Start by changing your name. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I actually, because you, because you said that, I Googled my company, Rhino Woodart, and a whole, I've never done this before, and all these pictures of my artwork came up. I'm like, wow, I had no idea that would There's happen. There's nobody else with that name. No, there's a bunch of companies with the same name. Rhino Artwork? Rhino Wood Art. Yeah, because they even get, but they make Rhino Artwork. Oh. Not out of wood, okay. but they're called Rhino Wood Art for some reason. Okay. Yeah. Okay. First That's thing awesome. you need to do is get a Google Alert on your name. Everybody know how to get a Google Alert. You just no. go to Google and type in Google Alert. <laughs> It'll take you over to the page. I would have showed you that, but I'm not going to go back and forth because we're losing too much time doing that. But go to Google Alert and put an alert in for your name, for your company, for um, every keyword you want to be known for. So for example, every morning I get Google Alerts on the gig economy, on people 50 plus who are in business, uh, employment for people 50 plus, the online uh, gig marketplace, I get all of these Google alerts. Why is that important?
because I'm an expert. So I have to tell you what's happening first. So when my Google alerts come in, it's the hot news on those topics. So when I go to LinkedIn and I go to my Facebook group, I'm telling everybody, hey, this new study came out and said X, Y, Z because I am the expert. Also, when you're keeping your name on Google Alert, if anything bad comes up about your name. For example, we only have one person here who I know exactly what their business is, so I'm just going <coughs> to use you as an example. What if somebody bought one of your wood pieces and some part of it broke off and they were mad? And they said that they tried to get you, but you were at a funeral, so you didn't really pay attention. So now they are online saying, he did this to me, I'm so angry. Your Google alert will let you know. You can make sure at the funeral, step out, contact the person, say, hey, I'm sorry, here's your money back, here's another, whatever you're gonna do, right? <coughs> Very important. By your name, if it's still, if your name's not available. Anybody with a common name is not available. But your name might be available. So, <coughs> janedoe.com. If you can't get .com, that's the best one to get. Get .net. Get .us. Get something with your name on it. You may not use it, but your domain name is only going to cost you $7.99 a year. You never know when you're going to use your name. You don't want somebody else to have your name. Because when, when the <coughs> employers are Googling you, whoever has the name .com, if there's something attached to it, it's going to come up first. So you don't want other people coming up with your name if you can prevent it hard to get your name now unless you got an unusual name. What would it say to you go to buy your name? I like GoDaddy. Mm. Um, the only reason, and I mean, there's tons of places. There are places you can get hosting for your, we're going to talk about this website, free, and they'll give you your domain free for a year, but GoDaddy is like $7.99. The reason I like GoDaddy, especially like since I work with mature people, is they have telephone customer support <laughs> and they speak English. That's why I like them. Connect with influencers. We're going to talk about exactly how you can do that. And here's just a couple tips for your social media. Don't let anybody else post on your social media. You know how people <coughs> If you don't have the right security on your social media, other people can actually post on it. Don't allow that. Because they may not have the same standards that you have. Um, don't let anybody tag you. Tell all of the people that are close to you, don't tag me on social media. Because you, know, you may be having a drink at a holiday party but the way they caught you, you look like this on the picture, <laughs> even though you, that was your first set. So you don't want crazy pictures up. Unfriend controversial people. Now this might be sticky, because I've had to unfriend young family members. I have a family member who's 26 who lost her child hmm. at two or three weeks, and she wanted to I said, let's connect. I wanted to counsel her. And she said, um, let's be friends on such and such. I looked at her profile. Mm -mm, no. Mm. I can't. We have to talk on the phone. Anybody for me, this is my standard, you create your own. Anybody for me, I don't do any political stuff. You know, every once in a while, it's something that I just have to do. But I, typically don't do anything with, right now, swear words are in, especially with the millennials. You can go to conferences and they're like, we are such and such, you know, we are, and it's supposed to be a good thing. We effing to do this and no swear words <laughs> on any of my stuff. Um, you can go, here's a free place you can go and check out your social media 
and see what it looks like. It's called brandyourself.com. Now, of course, once you get your report back, they're going to try to sell you services to clean up your sites. But at least you'll know what is going on, how people are perceiving you when they go look you up online. This is a really good site. It's called brandyourself.com. Okay, websites and blogs. Why are they important? Everybody in here, my humble opinion, should have a one-page website. You have your resume, right? You have your LinkedIn profile. And if you have a one-page website, that you can use for more bragging rights and more detail because you cannot give somebody these days a 10 page website, I mean 10 page resume, even though you've done 10 pages worth of good stuff, right? But if you have your one page website and it's parallax, meaning how it goes down, it just keeps going down, you know, it looks mm. like it's standard still. Um, you can have your clients, customers, previous employers, co-workers, you can tell people to do one minute video with their cell phone saying how great you are. I have even helped people who said, three people said they'll do a one minute video for me, but they don't know what to say. I said, write the script for them and allow them to edit. That's really the best thing to do. John, if you, you know, I'm looking for a job, if you would just write, do a, uh, use your cell phone and just do a one minute video sharing, you know, how I helped the company or how I was a great team member. Um, I, I wrote up, you know, from my recollection, I wrote up, you know, something that you could use if that'll be helpful to you. Just send it to them along with the invitation. You can also have um, links to everything else from your one page website. So the places that um, I recommend there are lots of places where you can get a free one-page website. Now, be advised that most of the free sites, they're going to come with advertising. And, you know, depending on if this is something you want to do for yourself, you may want to go ahead and spend whatever it is that they're going to charge you to take the advertising off, just so it looks a little more professional. But there are free sites. And I know people who are actually running successful businesses using these free sites. I don't understand this, but they are doing it. Yeah. Here's some other tips. Photos and videos. If you have videos on your one page website, Google's gonna rank it higher. Video is king. Video is king. So anything you do with video is gonna get ranked higher, which means you're gonna end up on the first page more often. Um, anytime your content changes, flips over, I was explaining this earlier, Google is going to go and crawl your website and see there's always new stuff coming on. So anytime, anybody here blog? Anybody podcast? Blogs are excellent. Blogs keep you fresh. Were you on the first page of Google? I used, to, I used to publish, I was a journalist and stuff was published online, so yeah, I was quite a few things for yeah, you. Yeah, a lot of stuff on your Monday. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They love content. So if you blog, then you're going to go up higher. And you don't have to just blog, you know, your own blog. If you have friends who have blogs, you can be a guest poster, you know. Um, any place where you can put content, you can go to forums and discussion groups and all of that and make thoughtful comments, all of that's gonna count to move you up to the first page. Photos with influencers. A question about blogging, would, would posting uh, articles on LinkedIn also? Yes, help, help that'll help you, yeah. LinkedIn is a strong boost. LinkedIn has, because they're a highly reputable site with, I don't even remember how many people they have on there now. So they're, they're very reputable with Google. Photos with influencers, I don't do this, but I know a lot of people who do. So if there are people in your industry, you happen to be at a conference with them, get a picture of them and say, 
you know, wherever you're going to say it, hey, I was so grateful to meet Guru, blah, 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 my industry at the so-and-so meeting, great guy, great gal, whatever you want to say. But photos with influencers and you tag them, uh, when you list their name, you do an at symbol, their name, that will not only go to some of their folks, it'll also go to yours. And, and people who are looking at you, if they see you with a couple high profile people, they automatically assume that you got it going on. I don't like it because I got swindled that way. There was a gentleman who was a professional con artist who had all of these pictures with these uh, really, really well-known people. I don't know if they were Photoshop, I don't know. But anyway, because he had that, I didn't do my due diligence and I paid him money and hired him, he produced nothing. Later on down the line, I found out that many of those people were suing him. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have the money to sue him, so I just lost. So I don't really like that strategy. I'm not like a big <laughs> one after names type person, but you might be, nothing wrong with it. <laughs> anyway, um, anything with numbers, infographics, Google loves those things. And you can get infographics done. If there's something in your industry that's hot, remember you're doing your Google alerts, so whatever hot issues are in your industry, you're going to find out about them. You can go on Fiverr.com and get somebody for $10, $15 to create infographics. If you've got a lot of data and you want to come up with something that's something that you created, you know, you draw the data from different places. There's nothing wrong with that. And you can post that place. This is going to get a ton of, of hits because they love infographics. Influencer relationships. Anybody know high profile people? Anybody in your family really high profile? Sure. My, my son thinks he's high profile. <laughs> <laughs> he's always telling me, Mom, I got this many people following me. I have these many friends. You don't know any of these people. They're not your friends. But that's a generational issue. So you got high profile people? Uh, decent mayor, stuff like that. Okay. You ever take pictures with the mayor? Uh, I took one a lot. I'm, to me, I'm kind of like you. Like my cousin was Tree Rollins, the basketball player. So I was around professional people, Mandela. I've been with. I was in the president. So I've got pictures with all, but I'm not one that self promote that way. You know, it's just okay. for me. Up to you. Don't talk about influencers. They are powerful. I had no idea how powerful they actually were. But I tell people, like the really high profile people, they're kind of hard to even connect with at all. Most of them still on LinkedIn, their, their accounts have gone over, you can't even become their friend. But the micro influencers, the people in your industry that a lot of people respect, you can connect with them. Whatever your industry is, you look for blogs, podcasts, books, whatever, for your industry. Hashtag those things in your um, industry and find out who's popping up. They could be micro-influencers. And you connect with them the same way you work LinkedIn. You know, if they're posting places where you can make comments, you know, make thoughtful comments. Don't make cheesy comments. Don't go through all of them and just say, Oh, I love this so-and-so, go to the next one. Oh, I love this so-and-so. <laughs> Be thoughtful. You got to read the article. You can't say something about the article you didn't read. <laughs> read their <laughs> materials and say, that was a good point, or raise a different point. If you want to be a thought leader, you don't always say, everything was great. You always have a different point of view. So I'm really known for raising questions with these micro-influencers. Because they'll have really good thoughts. I'll say, have you thought about maybe this could be the reason? Or what impact do you think this is having on your conclusions? Raise those kinds, because they will respond to that and you can have a dialogue with them. Make sense? Yes. Media. 
you, the media is on Twitter. If any of you guys have a topic, you're working on a project, you, you're doing something that's current, has to be current, that you think should get the media attention, they're all on Twitter. That's where they hang out because they have to go fast. And you have to preach your ask very thoughtfully. So last year, when for the last couple years, I do a um, conference um, called the BOOM, B-O-O-M, conference for people 45 plus who are interested in earning income on their own building businesses. And I am very grateful that each year I've had a celebrity serve as the host for, we do a pitch competition. And I get them from Twitter. I go to Twitter, I, you know, I look at TV, I see the people are talking about something I think will fit with my topic. I find them on Twitter, I start making a couple little comments with them, I drop a line about, oh, I do this event, you know, for people 45 plus. I especially try to find people who are 45 plus because they understand age discrimination and many of them in the media are facing it right now. So they're prone to accept my ass. Is this making sense to you guys? No, yeah. 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 Okay, 15 minutes worth of go giving. So you got your micro influencer. You're not gonna like, you know, I hate on LinkedIn when somebody becomes my friend and that automatic thing comes back. Oh, I read your profile. You sound so cool. I would love to talk to you about what I do. No. <laughs> That's like asking me for a date and I met you at the bus stop. No. So, if you're going to ask for any kind of informational thing, make it all about them. Don't try to tell them anything about you. They'll probably ask. But from your perspective, if you could, I would love to understand more how your company works or how you do what you do. I, I admire what you're doing. I, I, I would just love to know a little bit more. And then when they give you the 15 minutes, respect the 15 minutes. Don't try to keep them on the phone for 30. And don't try to sell you. Just find out from them. They are going to appreciate that. And then you can have, find out what they're interested in. You keep notes on that. Um, even if they've got a kid who plays baseball. You see something about baseball, you send it over. Hey, you might want to share this with your kid. I thought this was interesting. Just like you do in any other networking situation. But be a go-giver, not a go-taker. Public speaking. Just some options on things that um, you can do online that are going to raise your visibility. Remember I said on page one for me, there was a podcast that I did. Um, there was a webinar that I did, but for some reason it got kicked off. Um, any social media live. If you're a person, you love to do presentations, you feel comfortable with the camera, Live social media is all the rage. You can't even you can't even do it on LinkedIn right now unless you already have been approved. They're not approving anybody else because it's a beta. They're testing it. But I do uh, 45 plus hustle broadcast every Thursday at 7 p.m. That helps my stay on Google a lot because it's video. I have guests on there that I interview, so I'm leveraging. The micro influencers they tell their folks I tell my folks I don't get like tons of views I think the most views we ever had was maybe 260 that's not tons of views but it's amazing when people look it up some of them have like 80 views but it's consistent so people say yes to me more than I expect them to say yes I've had you know millionaire one person business people on um, top selling uh, uh, authors, and I, I mean, New York Times real, you know, Amazon is questionable because you can cheat Amazon. <laughs> um, well, Amazon knows that everybody's cheating, they don't care. Um, so any kind of live event is really, really helpful. Um, and of course, in person, meeting people, meetups here, all other places where you network. <clears throat> and I'm gonna end with this, because I really want to spend some time 
um, talking to you guys about your own particular situations, and I think I have to like 11.15, so. Um, virtual summits, anybody been to a virtual summit and you said you came to the summit last week? Anybody been to a virtual summit? Virtual summits, whatever your industry is, Google your industry and virtual summits and see if there are any available. They're becoming increasingly popular because they're all online, they're usually multiple days, and it's a way for a lot of associations don't incur all of that expense of having an in-person meeting. And it's also a way, if you're in the nonprofit world, to bring in some additional sponsors because the sponsorships tend to be less. And you can do that. And I'm telling you, I wish I could go back over to my LinkedIn profile so I can just show you guys and um, not be guessing on the numbers. But basically, you can do one day, you can do five days um, on a virtual summit. And the way it works, you would be the host. You would be the host. Because remember, we're building your reputation online. We're building your thought leadership online. You don't have to be an expert. You need to know the experts. And you don't have to build them personally. You need to know who they are. So you're the host. You go to the, the uh, connect with the experts and say, hey, you've already been getting your Google alerts. So you know the trends in your industry. You know the hot topic, you know the question of the day that everybody in the industry is complaining about, talking about, wanting to be involved in, whatever it is, you know it because you've been looking at your Google Alerts. So you say, hey, five, 10, depending on how many days you have, you usually pack it with people. Hey, thought leaders, uh, I'm going to be doing a virtual summit. I would say if you're going to do one, you probably want to do a one day one because it, it is it's work. Um, I'm going to do a virtual summit on this hot thing, and you're the foremost expert. I've got to have you on it. You don't pay them, you um, have them come on, and you use your uh, Zoom account. You guys have a Zoom account? You all need to get a Zoom account, put it on your list to do. Z O O M dot US. That is a video conferencing program, and you can get a free one. The free one limits you to, I think it's like 40 minutes um, for a conversation. Mm -hmm. a, a workaround is to schedule back to back 40 minute things. Right, right. Yeah, yeah that works. Put a, put a bridge in there. <laughs> But yeah, use Zoom, it's free, and it'll be a video conference. Everybody has a, a phone, if they don't have a phone, they've got a webcam. So you can do your interviews with the people with that. But you basically have them, uh, you know, you decide what the topic is, and based on your Google Alerts, your expertise, every angle of the topic, you know, and you find the thought leaders to do it. Um, you can earn income with it because you can actually get sponsors with it. If you've got, you know, seven experts in an industry, you can then go to some potential sponsors who want to interface with that industry and say, hey, would you be willing to sponsor it? It's not going to even cost you a lot of money because Zoom is free. Um, you're going to use social media, your social media, the uh, speakers use their social media um, to promote it. So you're not paying there. Um, you might pay for some advertising if you want to. You don't even have to. This last one I did um, was pretty much all done through social media. Um, and the Speakers are going to give you free stuff to promote. What's in it for them? Because it's called a lead magnet. You guys know what yeah. that is? So they have something of value that they're going to give to the audience in exchange for their email address. So they're building their list. 
they offer the magnets, you promote whatever these great things these speakers are going to give away, and you do it that one day, and the speakers do their thing, and the people come on, and they can go over to the links where they can download whatever the free giveaways are. This model, like I told you, I got on LinkedIn seriously, maybe about, maybe a year, maybe a little over a year, because I did my first summit January of this year, and I just did another one last week, week before, I don't know. I'm confused with the holidays. <laughs> um, but I went from maybe 20, I don't know. I don't really even know how many people I had on LinkedIn, but trust, I didn't have any because I didn't even go over there. And, and I went to presentations where people said, LinkedIn is the best thing since sliced bread. And LinkedIn is like boring. <laughs> <laughs> and then I really went over there and I was like, because I thought it was just people looking for jobs. And I thought everybody was over there crying about, I need a job. And when I went over there, I was like, this is not what LinkedIn is, really. So then I got excited, and that's when I did like the virtual summit. So I went from a very low number of connections to I think now I have maybe like 1,300 or something like that in less than a year. That's not like huge, because there are people who've done things and they end up with 10,000. But my people are very quality people. Mm. I, I run a, and I don't know how you do, I, I, I use that word really with a lot of grace because I don't run anything, but I have a group in LinkedIn called the, because I work on gig economy, the gig economy experts discussion group. I am connected with the top people in the industry. They know my name. The top people in the industry invite me to be on their events because I've done two of them now. I did one post about this summit that got 1,600 views. Most of my posts would get like three. <laughs> you know what I mean? Before I did that, and that would only be like, you know, my very best friends who know LinkedIn and are on LinkedIn. But, um, so it's not like I went from zero to a million connections or something, but I have connections with people who know this industry so well. I have a connection. This one, um, last one, I did two international speakers. This year I did four international speakers. I have a connection with a woman in the UK who is looking for me to get me a speaking opportunity in the UK because she loves what I do because she's been on both of the summits. I had a man from um, Pakistan who was in engineering and he just took a little side hustle doing a PowerPoint for a startup company, fell in love with PowerPoint presentation and now he, that's all he does. In less than two and a half years, he now has like three or four people working for him. And he's literally a millionaire in Pakistan. You know, I've met people from all over the world because I did the summits. It is a very quick way for you to build your thought leadership. Now, let's get back to how all of this kind of rolls in together, and then let's talk more specifically about your industry, your needs. So what does this do? If I am looking for you, and most of you guys in this room are experts. Now you know there's a whole continuum of being an expert, so don't be like, I'm not an expert. Yes, you are. If you've been doing this for 20 years, 10 years, you are an expert. You can teach people something. So if they're looking for people, if they say they want 10 years experience, that is considered expert level. So you are an expert. You must be seen as an expert, not only to capture the attention 
of the recruiter, but to negotiate a higher rate. And if people look for me, I'm not bragging on me, I'm just giving you this as an example because I began to manage my online reputation. If they look for me, they're going to say she is an expert because I'm on podcasts, I'm on webinars, uh, other people have me on their websites, I have experts on stuff related to me. So if it's between, in my subject area, so if it's between me and another speaker going after a gig, I have a pretty good chance of getting that in my area of expertise. Whoever hires you as an expert, they are going to be impressed if you are connected with people that they admire. Many people get hired for the craziest things. Like when it comes down to the last couple candidates, you would be surprised at the crazy things, right? Yeah. How the person gets hired. Oh, absolutely. You know, so they know that you're the type of person who is active online. You're always posting out there. Here's the latest, greatest trends in the industry. If that company wants to continue to be seen as an expert, even though that might not even be your job, the fact that you're doing that, they're like, yeah, they're gonna raise our visibility. We want employees who are experts to be out there, to be speaking, to be seen, to be vibrant. It is going to position you better. So I'm going back to my original question. Did anybody move on the continuum? Anybody? You moved a little bit? Yeah, I moved a little bit. A little bit? Mo moving towards the middle. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't expect you to go from sure. Yeah. <laughs> but did you move a little bit? God, I didn't do a good job. Yeah. You moved a little bit? I, I don't, well, I've been moving. I've been taking one little step at a time for <laughs> months. And because I, I because I was on your GeekCon conference last week, and this past Monday they had Flex Professionals here, uh -huh. and I'm starting to get it. You know, I, I think we, in my mind, you know, there's a way you go and look for a job, you get a job, you work, and you work, and you save your money up, and one day there's this mystical thing called retirement. Right. That's not really the case anymore. <laughs> and so I'm learning, you know, because I lived abroad 15 years where in Africa, this is what we did, everyone's a hustler. Right, right, so right, coming right. back here, like I, I looked at these professional positions, like, can I, how do I do this in America where it's, where people my age are on this end of the spectrum, I need to kind of go back a few years and get with these younger people. And so even my consultants to my art business are actually a bunch of 20 something year olds because they do all my social media. Right. And that's what it's about now. Yeah. Like they're not, so whether I like or not, it's, I'm moving because I realize I don't really have a choice anymore. You're absolutely right. We don't have much of a choice. Yeah, I've, I've been moving to working as a digital uh, writer. Of course, you're all online. And I think a lot of people are concerned that they're giving up information that hackers could use. Right. But I think that's the personal identifying information. I keep my birth date right. off of everything. But mm -hmm. that's not, you know, that's not what you need to have out there to, to boost your professional reputation. Right. And a, a question, what do you think of the Facebook Live for um, professional and, and business uh, discussions? Is Absolutely. It, yeah? Absolutely. You it's guys, 40 plus needs to be streaming this right mm -hmm. now. Yeah. Right, yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and this is the deal. So, like, a lot of people are caught up in these numbers. And you... It's the metric kit, I'm sure the word. You can't hunt. You know, so when you do something and you look at it and say, oh man, this is a waste because only 12 people looked at it or whatever, the number that seems low in your mind. Your consistent presence online will boost your reputation. The consistent people are the ones who get found. And if somebody finds, like, send employers looking through social media or something, they see that you do a live something once a week, however often you do it, 
And they, they're going to look to see. Some places won't show anybody else how many people saw stuff, only the person who posted it. But they'll try to see how popular things are. And even if it's not that popular, for some, the growth. They'll say you went from 12, now you're at 59, you know, 200, whatever it is. They look at growth and they look at consistency. Because you're gonna you're gonna um, use your hashtags for all of the stuff you do, and the more you use those hashtags, the more you get established as an expert in that area. So if you want to go over to another area, you can start. You don't have to be the total expert. You start pulling in the expertise, and you interview the experts. You use those hashtags for those interviews in the area where you want to go. So when the people who care about these things look up these hashtags, you're going to keep popping up. Yeah. I have a question going all the way back to something I think you mentioned in answer to your original question about mm -hmm. where we are. Mm -hmm. So what um, the idea of having a professional online presence or public facing or however we're going to call it versus a private one. Mm -hmm. Is that recipe for disaster? Is that workable? Is, I mean, what yeah, you, what I mean, you can have both. There, there are lots of people who have both. Um, you just need to make sure that your personal one is also going to support your business or your career one. So you can't be over here on your career site being really professional, all your pictures you have suits on or whatever, and then go over here and you've got like a wig on or something, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because it's like a disconnect. It's, 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 it's not that you can't be yourself, right? but you gotta figure out how to be yourself both places. Right. So it doesn't seem like you're a totally different person for real right. than what you're showing me over here. Yeah, I mean, that's going to make a contradiction that is going to either at least raise a flag and that right. requires some explanation. But short of that, yeah. I mean, just to separate out, yeah. you know, these things are, I mean, I mean, I think the obvious one is like, here's a bunch of stuff with your family, blah, 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 right. that you just don't And have you to. noticed even on LinkedIn, like they're getting more lax? I don't like it. Yep. I see baby pictures, right. cats <laughs> on yeah. LinkedIn. I personally don't there's like a, it. There's a bit of Facebookization though. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Curse words. Yeah. I don't like it. I don't suggest anybody in here go that far because there are going to be people like me who are hiring who I'm not, I'm not hiring anybody who's got a lot of swearing online. I won't. Right. Mm. I, I had a um, keynote speaker. Uh, this year for a, a conference. And I didn't take enough time because I had somebody else was working with me who was doing the vetting of her. And you know, she was really good and everything. She's like funny and everything. And then I saw she started doing these live presentations. It wasn't like a lot of swearing, but it was the typical swearing that people are doing now to show that they're cool mm -hmm. and whatever. And I called her and I told her we would not have any swearing at all, none. And so this may not work for you because I see, you know, you having some conversations like that. And she promised me, and so I had her sign in her agreement that if she said one curse word, she was not getting paid and she's going to get pulled. Because this is my, I guard my reputation a lot. You know, I have a, pri a, 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 a a personal Facebook page, and if you go over there, you're going to find lighthearted stuff. you find pictures of me and my friends. You'll find, you know, some funny things or whatever. And every once in a while, I'll have a rant like, you know, I can't believe I went to shoppers and they, they cheated me or something. I've got to go back, <laughs> you know, something like that. You'll see that every once in a while. Um, but for me, I'm not going to let anybody mess up my reputation online. It's too important. 
we are going to the place where, whether we like it or not, you said it perfectly, and it's going to happen in our lifetime, where that stuff is going to be more important in some circles than this stuff. It's, it's a mindset change, you know, for me at least. It's a mindset change, right? I completely understand the importance of this. It's hard for me to put myself out there. So I think that if we find a way to maybe put ourselves out there more professionally, for me at least, it will be easier to do that than to always go back to the Facebook world when you see everybody know what I ate this morning. What right. I <laughs> 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 you know, this is uh, one of the reasons why I... You know, we talked about potential topics that I can cover, and, and this came up. It's because my audience that I deal with are, are you guys. And so I know that more of you tend to be over here. You know, I don't want, or if you are over there, it's usually for your grandkids, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. But there is a place for it professionally. And so I think it's really critical for us to understand that because the young people know it. They know it. I mean, I hang out a lot with millennials, not like in person, online, and I learn so much from them. Like prior to doing the summit, I was at this millennial um, thing, part of DC Startup Week. And, you know, just talking to them, just the way they move on social media and how they network and what they do. I'm just looking at them. I'm like, wow, yeah. that's not the world I grew up in. The world I grew up in was like, hi, I'm Angela yeah. here, yeah. right? right? Hi. <laughs> the world they grew exactly. up in, they would have come here with their tennis shoes on. They would be like, you know, slouching in the chair. Yo, dude, what's up? Yeah, saw you. Man, you gonna get that boat? That's their world. Uh, yeah. It's, yeah. it's different from us. And if we don't get with the times, we will be left behind. Yeah. It already is happening. Um, oh, you sorry. know, I've worked in digital content. So, I mean, I have a portfolio website, which I developed this year. But the thing for me that I got from you is video. Um, yes. How video can raise your your online presence mm -hmm. because it ranks, Google ranks videos higher. Right. Like my YouTube, I haven't used video, I haven't used podcasts as well. Podcasts are more audio, but I know they're being used a lot. A lot. So I guess they're getting, they help people rank higher too. Mm -hmm. So, and the whole thing with the virtual summit is video. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's a quick way to raise your online uh, footprint. Right. Yeah, I have I've had a YouTube channel for a long time and I don't hardly use it. And so now I'm consulting with someone about because uh, I use Zoom a lot for clients because uh, you can have clients all over and it feels better than you know talking on the phone or sending an email. Um, how to connect my Zoom, because I do a Facebook Live every Thursday night, all of that with my YouTube. I know I can stream from one to the other, but I want to figure out, and I'm have somebody else figure it out. How do I do all three? So I'm doing something only once, and then I don't know if I can automatically post it on my blog. If I can figure out that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That's definitely. That's good. That's that good, good, right? <laughs> But it probably is. You guys yeah. heard of um, uh, a um, app called If This Then That. That's a good tool. It's I F then I F T T T dot com, um, and you can connect all kinds of apps together. So if I post mm -hmm. on my blog, then you send a tweet. If oh, I God. send a tweet, then you do that. Mm -hmm. So you and it. Uh, there's like literally hundreds of things you can connect. So you only do something once. So I'm sure they'll figure out how to maximize my time. Anybody have anything in particular for your industry? I think we're over time. I think I better stop. <laughs> <laughs> a little more Q&A, yeah, 24 hours. 
should we wrap it up, John? Yeah, just so people have a chance to talk with you after. Okay. Yeah. Well, here is all of my contact information. Uh, and if you have your phone, you can text to 44222 gig work and I'll send you my big assessment, which you guys may not be interested in, but it is for people who are trying to look at what options do they have to earn income. But you can connect with me any of these kinds of ways. Yeah, if you want the slides, send me an email and just say slides and I'll, I'll send it to you. Okay, a lot of great information. Thank yeah. you so much. Anna. You're welcome.